Sunscreen is too expensive. This is something I hear all the time in the comments of my videos and you know, it is a common uh, concern people have and rightfully so. We're talking when it comes to protecting your skin from the sun, the recommendation is to wear sunscreen daily to sun exposed areas. If you're gonna be outside in the sun, you need to reapply every two hours. Not only is sunscreen uncomfortable to put on, it's sticky, oily, greasy, but that ends up being quite a bit of sunscreen. Many people feel as though it is cost prohibitive. So in this video, we're gonna break down a study that looked at uh, the cost of sunscreen. Is sunscreen a luxury? We already know, if you didn't know, by the way, exposure to UV rays that come from the sun, they damage the DNA in our skin cells and they put us at risk for skin cancer. Skin cancer is very, very, very common. And it, you know, many skin cancers, while they don't go on to kill the individual, the individual doesn't go on to die from them, they do require treatment. They can be very invasive, meaning grow down deep in your skin, require very involved surgeries to correct, leave it you with scars. It's, yeah, it's not, it's not anything you want. Um, and we know that UV rays from the sun, they also lead to premature skin aging that weakens our skin long-term. Things like impairment in our skin barrier, weakening of the collagen, loss of elasticity. Really, those, those changes, while part of normal aging, they come about much sooner in the setting of unprotected sun exposure because of those UV rays that are so damaging. But because of those things, the recommendations are to protect your skin from the sun with a variety of measures. One is don't stay out in the sun too long especially during midday when those UV rays are most intense. To wear sun protective clothing like long sleeves, long pants or skirts, a hat, of course sunglasses. Uh, and number three, not ever, ever, ever get in a tanning bed. That's basically a very, very strong mega dose of UV rays right on your skin really, really, really dramatically increases your risk of skin cancer. And number four, wear sunscreen to sun exposed surfaces of the skin. Usually that's gonna be your face, your neck, your ears, the backs of your hands. But if you are like at the beach wearing a bathing suit, it's gonna be other areas, your legs, if you're wearing shorts, you're gonna to wanna to wear sunscreen on your legs. And people start questioning, well, okay, all right, that's fine. But then throw in the, uh, the fact that if you are wearing sunscreen and you are outside, well, it's gonna get rubbed off. Uh, it's, you know, starts to lose efficacy. So guess what? You need to reapply it every two hours while you are out in the sun. And people are going, wow, okay. Then, say you're gonna be at the pool, you get in the water, well guess what? As soon as you get out, you need to reapply sunscreen. Wait, I thought it was water resistant. Yes, even if it's water resistant, you still need to reapply it because it comes off. Uh, so this starts to get people questioning like, how do people afford this? This is too cost prohibitive. Sunscreen certainly is helpful. It has been shown to reduce the risk of skin cancer and premature skin aging, and it protects you from a sunburn, but it's not perfect and it has a lot of limitations. What are the limitations of sunscreen? Well, historically, sunscreens did not offer very good protection against UVA rays. So from the sun, you've got UVB and UVA rays that damage your skin. Historically, sunscreens really only protected from the UVB rays. We've gotten a lot better at the UVA protection piece of things. Uh, which is good because the UVA rays definitely are very, very much active in the skin cancer riskage. Okay, and then the other thing is there's always been this idea and a lot of studies support this that wearing sunscreen actually prompts people to end up staying out in the sun too long. Um, and as a result, they end up getting too much sun exposure. And number three is that we know people actually don't apply enough sunscreen. Uh, you actually have to apply a pretty thick layer to achieve achieve the stated protection factor, factor on the bottle. It's based on how they measure that. They measure it uh, after applying it at a density of two milligrams per centimeter square, which is just honestly not realistic in real world use. Nobody does that. Nobody applies it at that thickness. Uh, number four is just the labeling is confusing. People don't really have a good grasp of what SPF means. Uh, it's actually very technical in a sense. Uh, protecting from a burn is one piece of things, but sunscreen does a lot, lot more. 
And so a lot of people, um, I think, because of the way sunscreens are labeled, I think people are misled in, in many ways. And one way is perhaps by staying out too long, or another way is in people who don't burn, they may say, oh, this is supposed to protect me from a burn. I don't burn, I don't need it. And then the other major issue is the cost, which is what we're gonna talk about in this video. Okay, so this is a study that looked at the, tried to figure out the true cost of sunscreen. They looked at countries throughout Europe and in North America. Um, and they created a few hypoth two hypothetical situations, which we'll get into. They priced out sunscreen in the US, Canada, France, Belgium, the UK, Germany, Spain, Italy, and Sweden. This was a 2011 study, so you gotta factor in, now we're in 2022 inflation, but going back to 2011, at that time, the median price for sunscreen was $1.70 per 10 grams. There was variation, of course. Uh, the highs, I think, were somewhere around $20 per 10 grams, and the lows, you know, fractions of a dollar. Anyways, uh, interestingly enough, Italy had the most expensive sunscreens. They're, they're, they had the highest median price, whereas Canada had the lowest median price. Another interesting finding was that Europe the price of sunscreen got more expensive as the protective factor increased, whereas in North America, the opposite. The price dropped as the protection went up. This particular study, they, they came up with some some theoretical scenarios trying to calculate what the true cost of sunscreen usage would be. They decided they were gonna create this fictional family of a mother, a father, and two children who were gonna be at the beach for a week and they were gonna be spending four hours a day for the entire week, seven days a week, out at the beach, and all they were gonna do was wear sunscreen, but they were gonna wear sunscreen as directed, meaning they were gonna apply two milligrams per centimeter square, that thick, thick layer that almost no, no one does, um, they were going to reapply it as directed. So for the four hours a day spent at the beach, they decided in, in this fictional case that the kids, because kids run around, they play, they get in the water more than mom and dad might, kids were gonna apply sunscreen three times during the four hour period, um, whereas mom and dad were going to apply twice a day each, uh, presuming that mom and dad were just chilling on the beach, not doing much. Um, so they calculated that, and they actually calculated it based on having uh, children of different ages. Dad's wearing swim trunks, mom is in a bikini. They didn't elaborate on what kids were wearing. So if you have two two-year-olds, that is 53.3 meters squared of body surface area for kids a week at this beach scenario that you need. Whereas if you have 10-year-olds, once they grow up, well, you need a lot more sunscreen. 71.4 meters squared surface area needs to be covered. So what does this end up costing? Like, what is the true cost of this? Well, in 2011, which is when the study was done, that would come out to $178.20 for a week at the beach where you are spending four hours in the sun. Uh, if you have two two-year-olds, if you have two 10-year-old children and mom and dad, it's gonna cost you $238.40 per week. So that is, that's, that's a big chunk of your vacation budget right there, for sure. Then they repeated this analysis, but they threw in something different. Now everybody is going to be wearing UPF shirts, sun protective shirts, swim shirts. They're gonna be wearing swim shirts and they're going to buy a specific type of sunscreen. They're gonna buy a sunscreen in a big bottle, an, an economy size. By throwing in the sun shirt, it decreases the cost by a third. You, you spend a third less money on sunscreen if you buy a shirt, if you wear a shirt. And you may say, well, those shirts are expensive. They are expensive, but you can reuse them. Whereas sunscreen, you cannot reuse uh, sunscreen if you don't use it within a period of time, three years, it expires. Um, so it's an investment to buy the shirt, but it does save you on the sunscreen cost. And then they looked at the combination of using the sun shirts plus buying a big bottle of sunscreen. You guys frequently comment this, you know, the little, a lot of sunscreens are in these tiny bottles and they're actually pretty expensive per, per ounce. So if you go for the big, big bottle, like the big, you know, econo size, 
then that ends up decreasing your cost by 58%. So those are some things that you could do to, to cut costs. Get a bigger bottle of sunscreen and get a sun protect a sun shirt if you're going to be spending a day at the beach but it is that, that is a chunk of money right there for sure undeniably it's important to point out though that this study doesn't actually look at like the specifics of the sunscreen when they're saying buy a bigger bottle they don't they didn't necessarily take into account well is that a water resistant sunscreen is that an spf 50 or is it an spf 30 what type of uh, consistency is it they didn't really factor that in they're just going purely on volume here buying a bigger bottle is less expensive but this is a scenario that i think is more relevant to where people you know kind of chime in like how cost effective is that in the long run so here they have an individual they wear sun protective clothing every day they avoid the sun during peak exposure hours and they wear sunscreen daily to sun exposed areas which are going to be the face the neck and the backs of the hands and this in this individual we're going to say works monday through friday and monday through friday they apply sunscreen once a day they're mostly inside all day they don't go out on the weekends they go run errands they apply sunscreen twice a day on the weekends this is an adult that's going to be 1.2 to 1.4 meters squared body surface area that needs sunscreen per week so in 2011 that works out to being 4.7 to 5.6 dollars a week. For year round application to apply sunscreen like that to the face, the neck, the backs of the hands, every single day, twice a day on the weekends, in a year you're gonna spend anywhere from $245.30 to $292.30. So that is, I don't know, at, in 2011, I wouldn't have thought that that was too expensive. I don't know what it would be now with inflation. I recognize, however, that for a lot of people, it's just very, it, it does end up being cost prohibitive. Like spending, we'll just say, let's just pretend that in 2022, it's going to end up being, I don't know, $400 a year, $500 a year. Is that worth it to you? $500 a year? Everybody, Everybody's definition of what is cost prohibitive varies. I think um, for some people, you know, it's fine. They're, they're gonna be okay with that. People spend a lot more money on other things that nobody bats an eye at. Starbucks drinks, different TV packages. A lot of people spend that kind of money on on other health and wellness things too. So for some people, it's just not gonna seem that much, but for some people who are really struggling financially, that is a lot of money that could go towards other things, paying off debt, uh, you know, getting food, paying bills, you know, more pressing upfront costs that need to be taken care of acutely. And, you know, this preventative piece of things is just not, not a priority. I totally understand that. And so when people comment like, Sunscreen is cost prohibitive. I am not like blind to the fact that for a lot of people, it is just too expensive. In my opinion, and studies support doing this, in my opinion, at least in public spaces like parks, zoos, uh, the beach, I do think that sunscreen should be offered for free. We have good studies to show that when sunscreen is free, people are more likely to use it. And I observed this firsthand when I was living in Colorado, there's this company, Rocky Mountain Sunscreen, and they would be at all sorts of outdoor events, summertime, there, you know, festivals go on, little food festivals, arts, arts and crafts festivals. This sunscreen brand would have a tent at every single one of these things, giving out free sunscreen. And I was always like, that was the first time I actually saw people putting sunscreen on willingly outside of being at the beach or the pool. And so it really can make a difference if sunscreen is, is provided. I do think that health insurance plans should offer some cost coverage for sunscreen, especially in people who have photosensitive skin conditions like uh, rare skin conditions, of course, like something called xeroderma pigmentosa very rare, but basically those people, they can't uh, repair damage to the DNA in their skin cells upon UV exposure. They get skin cancers very, very young. They have to be really, really sun avoidant. Uh, people who have had a transplant, an organ transplant, they have to be really sun 
sun avoidant because they're at a greater risk for skin cancer because the medicines that they go on to prevent rejection of the transplanted organ, lower their immune system, make them at great risk for skin cancer. So I really think that their insurance plans should cover the cost of sunscreens. Now here in the US, many people have a certain type of insurance plan. Uh, within their insurance, they have something called a flexible spending account, a health savings account, basically money that is set aside each year out of your paycheck that goes to that goes to buying health related items, including sunscreen and that money you then do not have to pay income tax on. So that ends up being, being great for a lot of people. I definitely encourage you to take advantage of that. If you have that, you have to be careful. If you do have that, not all sunscreens are approved for that. Uh, so if you go to Sephora to buy a sunscreen, it's not going to be likely on your health savings account. <laughs> um, so just know that do your do your research as they say before before that but all this to say i did want to make this video because i do get this comment a lot and i'm not dismissing you guys when you leave that comment that it's just too expensive i totally understand that um and i would highly encourage you to rein in other sun protective behaviors being very mindful of your exposures wearing hats sun protective clothing i do think having a few items of clothing that uh, you can rely on. I think it ends up being a huge cost savings. Relying on sun protective clothing is actually a lot more reliable in the long run. Uh, it's more consistent, you know, with sunscreen, you've got the, you've got the inconsistencies, you've got the application density, you've got it rubbing off. Uh, and then you have just people being forgetful. It's a pain to keep up with. Whereas an item of clothing, you just put it on and that's it. Uh, the clothing becomes more of an issue in hotter climates. In the description box, I'm going to link my video on sun protective clothing. You don't have to buy uh, UPF specific clothing. UPF is kind of like SPF for clothing. There are a variety of brands that make UPF clothing. I wear like Cooley Bar. Um, on Amazon, you can get uh, less expensive brands like Belief, and those are great options, but you don't have to necessarily get those. Uh, certain weaves of fabric offer very good UV protection. So I'm gonna link that in the description box. That is another way to cut the cost when it comes to your sun protection. It shouldn't be cost prohibitive. And uh, the, the goal is not to you know make you go out and buy a, a bunch of sunscreen with this messaging. It was really just to inform you as to how best to protect your largest organ. And that includes multiple behaviors. It's not really just sunscreen. If you think about it, if you're doing all the other behaviors, you really shouldn't actually end up needing as much sunscreen because it's really gonna be just your face, the backs of your hands, your neck, um, and so it ends up being less expensive in the long run. I know a lot of you guys, for example, you work jobs where you are, you are out in the sun, you, you work construction or landscaping and you are out in the sun all day. Does your employer provide you sun protective clothing, a hat at least? Um, I'm sure they, you know, I, I would be doubt, I doubt they provide you with sunscreen, but uh, I think these are things that we should talk more openly about. Let me know in the comments though, what are your barriers when it comes to sunscreen? Is it the consistency? Is it the cost? Is it the, um, just the time that it takes to apply it? Do you find that sun protective clothing is more useful and that you rely on it? Are you someone who uh, just chooses to avoid the sun as much as possible uh, during peak exposure? What do you do to protect your skin from the sun? How is sunscreen helpful to you and what are the barriers that you experience when it comes to accessing it or using it? On the end slate, I'm going to post a recent video where I break down some some common misconceptions about sunscreen. So definitely check that one out. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.